Thank you. Is this on? I'm good to go. Uh, so I, I wore my baseball glove here, and, um, and I, I kid you not. So um, the plan was to sprint out here uh, <laughs> with my glove because my mom always used to tell me that uh, you always got to be like Charlie Hustle no matter what, whether you're doing good, good times, bad times, you sprint your butt out to that field no matter what. The problem with that was I was backstage, or excuse me, back in the bathroom. Somebody, my who was in there, somebody walked in there, almost caught me. Oh, it wasn't. I was trying to sprint in the bathroom, practicing my sprint, but these god dog pants are tight. You know? And seriously, they're, they're too tight. And, you know, my, 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 my son over here, you know, they're all in the business of changing dad's wardrobe. Uh, so so they, uh, apparently I'm not hip enough. I actually just drove up to my wife's job to uh, pick up some papers, and she, she straight up looked at me in my face, and she said, Daryl, you need to change your shoes, okay? So these are not the original shoes that I wore. I, I literally, I brought those shoes in my car because I knew she was going to say something about them. And I was really just looking for her confirmation because I know that's what, you know, he'll, he'll tell you. He said that he, he worked at uh, PacSun, and he's the one that picked these pants out for me, okay? And, and so that, that uh, I, I, didn't, I do need help. And that's what she said. You need help? I said, that's why I married you, girl. I need that help. So. Uh, with that being said, if, there, if you don't get anything else from me today, okay, just understand there is a God. Why? Because there ain't no reason a brother should be wearing pants these tight, okay? <laughs> so I never, I never, I see when I play ball, I'm not, I'm not wearing pants like these, okay? They're spread out. So if I can get in these pants, you can get through any situation in your life. <laughs> just remember me. Just remember me. These pictures, these pants, okay? One, one last thing about these pants, okay? I say that I, I got in these pants. The problem is not getting in them, OK? <laughs> he will attest to you. He cupped these things for me. It's getting out of them. It is teamwork. That's where I learned teamwork. We're sitting there literally, come on, man. You got to turn it to the right. Turn to No, it don't go that way. So that's why I'm saying have hope for anything. All things are possible, all right? All things are possible, OK? Um, another story. Uh, so she, she talked about how we met. And we, did, we, 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 had, we sat down at Starbucks. And we're sitting there, and she's explaining to me about inspired leaders, and I'm already excited inside, and you know, I love to talk. If you know me, I love to talk. Sometimes I talk too much. I know that. I realize. I'm okay with that. But as she's sitting there, and she's explaining this thing, I'm just like, hurry up and ask me. Hurry up and ask me. Because I know she's there to ask, hey, can you speak for this event? And so in my mind, she says, hey, do you, are you willing to speak? And I'm like, girl, you seen Jerry Maguire? You had me at hello. Right? Come on, man. I'm ready. And so seriously, I get excited about that. And so she, she made the mistake of asking me, do you kind of know what you might be talking about? And of course, I'm like, girl, I got it, boo-boo. We're good. Done. Straight up. And so what happens as, as soon as I walk out the door, I talk to myself. I'm crazy like that. I promise you, I'm crazy. He'll, tell, he'll test to it. I literally talk to myself. If you don't like being around me, I promise you, don't be around me because I will talk to myself. So I'm walking out the door, I'm having a conversation with myself about this event, and this little dude's on my shoulder, and he's looking at me like this, mm. and I'm like, bruh, what do you want now? You did it again, didn't you? Did what? You spoke before you thought again, huh? And I'm like, man, get off my shoulder, right? <laughs> so anyways, that, that's how I did. But so when I got home, I really started thinking about what it was that you guys would need. What, it, what, what would I need as a person? What would these people need? I, I work with kids a lot. and a lot of times, the parent, I have some parents in here that I train of their kids. And the word that comes up a lot in their lives is confidence. My son needs confidence. And here it is. I blurt it off. Oh, I'm going to teach about coaching with confidence. And I'm like, boy, sit your butt down and think about what, what would help people and what would help you. And throughout my career, I recognized that confidence was a big issue. Because what, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you two different people of Daryl and DJ. Okay, my, my wife would tell you that DJ is a totally different person than Daryl. I'm Daryl. You understand that? But DJ was something else. Okay? DJ was someone that was in the middle of chaos but did not know how to handle it. DJ was someone that was in the middle of a situation that could have killed him, and he did not know it. And the reason why I'm saying that, and if you, if you don't mind clicking on the next one, let's define chaos. Chaos is a situation, is complete disorder, confusion, and disorganization. So all of this is going on in my life. May I not, may I, may I really bring, bring this up to you, is that the time that this disorder, complete, you know, uh, disorganization happened was when I was in Major League Baseball. OK? 
Okay? At a time where most people thought that I was, oh, all that, that was the worst time of my life on the inside. Complete disorder and chaos. And there's two, ple there's two places you never want to find yourselves. You might click to the next uh, slide. Okay? There's two places you never want to find yourself. Okay? Yeah, I'll skip over that. That's fine. Because they both tie together. No, you can go back. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. It's okay. They, they both tie together, so that's fine. Okay, there's two places you never want to find yourself. You never want to find yourself having success and not know why. And you never want to have failure and not know why. Because if you're having success and you don't know why, then it can't be repeatable. You're not going to be able to intentionally make it work for you. I had a friend, uh, Bob Earl. Some of you may know him. He's a mortgage uh, owner in this community. Uh, we coached together for a few years, a couple years ago. And he asked me, he said, Daryl, do you believe that you can be doing the things of God and not know it? And I said, absolutely. But why would I want to do anything in this life and not know why I'm having success with it? On, all, on the other hand, why would I ha want to have failure and not know it? So the, the next slide, or the one before that, sorry. Go to the one before that. Okay. So this question right here, how to keep yourself from spiraling out of control. The reason why I'm asked that question a couple weeks ago that uh, we, uh, we were in a man's zone class, and they asked this question, how to keep your life from spiraling out of control. Now, with my analytical mind, keep in mind, like I said, we need to know when our life is spiraling out of control. We need to know that so we can make those right adjustments. In my mind, I heard how to keep yourself from going in a slump too long. As a baseball player, if you don't understand what a slump is, a slump is simply a position that you don't want to find yourself in. You're struggling. How many of you guys are Astro fans in here? Okay, if you remember, you guys familiar with Alex Bregman, right? Okay, if you, if you remember that, a few years ago, when he first got called up to the big leagues, he, he, he didn't do very well. <laughs> he did not do very well. And so he was in a place where, you know, everything was spiraling out of control. And it's in those moments that we determine and define who we really are. Because in sports, one thing sports teaches us is that when you are having success, everybody can celebrate. But show me what you look like when you are having failure. I want to see how you act when you have failure. And baseball is a perfect game to show you, you know, that right there because you're playing a sport they have three times out of ten, you're having success. Seven times out of ten, you are failing. So you get a good chance to see what your real character is about. Are you willing to go through the grind no matter what? And that's what we have to understand. And chaos, how many of you guys, raise your hand if you, if you believe that we're living in a chaotic time right now. I, I believe that. I, I believe that. And the way I look at that, I look at that as a baseball player. I, I'm very analytical. I look at that. That's like me stepping up to the plate and a pitcher that's trying to throw me fastballs. Because the fastball, you guys know Justin Verlander, right? That joker throws hard, okay? <laughs> He throws 100 miles an hour, and the reason why it's so effective is because it's designed to throw your timing off. The speed of the pitch, as a hitter, your mindset literally thinks it's coming so fast, so I got to speed up. That's the natural assumption. I got to speed up. And so that's where you get all hitters because as a hitter, if I'm speeding myself up, then what happens is now everything is a lot easier to be out of chaos. It's, it's a lot e easier to be chaotic because there's no control over that. It's only when, as a hitter, I have a level of control. How do I get my control? By slowing myself down. The more control I have over my body, it's not a matter, it's not a matter of how the pitch, how fast the pitch is coming. It's how well I'm controlling myself. That is what we deal with as a player. And so as a player, when I step up, I have to have an approach when I wake up in the morning. I have to have an approach when I step up to the plate. I literally, there's some days I'll get up in the, be in, in, in the morning, and I literally, I'll stand up. In my wall, I'm like, what's up? What's up? What you got for me? <laughs> to get my mindset in a place where I got to sit, because that's how I relate. I mean, God teaches me through sports every day. I learn from these kids. I probably know more about the baseball swing and about the human body and all from watching these kids. I'm reading a book, uh, Millionaire, uh, was it Millionaire Mindset? I think it's by Dean Graciosi. Some of you guys may have heard him. And uh, there's an interview in there, and one of the guys is a real estate uh, uh, he's a real estate guy, and he says, I made millions of dollars doing real estate. I made hundreds of millions of dollars teaching it because the level of his knowledge went up when he got a chance to step outside of himself and see all these things that are happening. And I'm, I'm laying this groundwork for you so when, I dive, so when I take you through my life, you'll be able to see what, exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? So we got to understand that it, it, the confidence, I'm going to tell you right now, confidence, everybody in here has confidence. Everybody in here has confidence. I'm going to come at you at a different angle. The question is, what do you have confidence in? That's a question that as an athlete is very tough to deal with because as an athlete, performance matters. 
in here, performance matters. We're all business leaders, entrepreneurs. We're people that we work for people. Performance, the bottom line matters, right? And so we're constantly told, hey, you have to perform well. You have to perform well. Well, if you're not careful, your performance becomes to be who you are. And if you don't, under, if you don't accept the fact that you are who you are is different than what you do, you'll cave in and you know, quit in the process when things aren't going right. And I battled that. I, I was going through my Snapchat today, and, and I saw that it was, I think it was Suicide Awareness Week or something like that. Too. You guys are, and so that identified with me. I identified with that. Because I remember as a pro ball player, I'm going to take you through my pro life. I remember sitting down at, that, at times wanting to commit suicide because I had a bad game. I remember laying in the bed, not wanting to go to the club, drink, smoke weed, do everything I needed to do just because my coach put me on the bench. These times were chaotic. I stayed with my wife's sister at this time where I got sent down from AA, and I did everything I did. I did everything I needed to do, and he still put me on the bench. And so I cut my entire family off. If I didn't have a bad game, I ruined relationships with my own family because things weren't going right in my life. So was it the game or was it me? See, there was things that were going on in my life that I had not dealt with. But now, here's the point. This is where I decided to change is because now it's starting to pour over into my performance on the field. I had a coach tell me. Man, it was crazy. I had my pitching coach tell me. Dave Martinez, we were at the club partying. This is DJ talking. This DJ, not Daryl. DJ was at the club, okay? <laughs> DJ was at the club party, and the next day, Dave pulls me aside. He said, Daryl, you amazed me. I said, hi, I saw a coach. He said, if you played baseball the way you act at the club, God, don't you be unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> and what was he pointing to? He was saying there was a freedom out there. There was a freedom. I was a different person out there. Regardless of the chaos, the alcohol, the drugs, the weed, all that stuff allowed me to be free. It allowed me to forget about what I was going through currently. And so that showed me something that it's really not about the chaos that we're going through. It's about how we control that situation. How do we free ourselves without having to destroy ourselves? Do you guys get what I'm saying? Because free, there's freedom either way. You can get free one way by being authentic and being who you are, but, some, but that takes you opening yourself up now. That takes you putting on the risk of being hurt. Or you could put up that wall and be someone that you're not and continue to identify that way. But the problem is you're never going to get to where you want to because that's not the real you. You guys follow me? That's not the real you. So your image as a ball player has got to be, de has got to be defined before you get there. It's got to be defined before you get there. I'll show you later on as we go through the slides, I'll show you that my mother, how she trained me was she got me to believe and who I was before I ever touched a major league baseball. You guys understand that? I saw myself as that, and therefore I was able to a lot easier take on the actions of what a major league baseball player would do. And so when it comes to developing confidence as a coach, I hear this all the time. I hear, you got to be confident. How many coaches ever, you heard a coach say, ever, ever say that? Or you got you to gotta have peace, man. You just got to do it. I'm a very analytical person. You can't just say random things like that to me and think that I'm not, I'm going to break that thing down, okay? So you say, okay, how do you have confidence? What are you going to do for the confidence? What plan of action are you going to take to develop the confidence? We're talking about confidence and chaos. Well, I'm not going to leave you. Man, you just got to be confident. Bad situation, you got to be positive. Oh, yeah, let's go. No, that's not what this is. What my plan is to do is to take you through my life and literally give you physical tools that you can take and apply to your life. You can take and apply to your marriage. You can take and apply to your relationship with your kid. And then I'll give you a little treat at the end of the, uh, the lesson and share something with you that's currently going on in my life to prove to you that this thing works. And the whole reason I told you why as a baseball player is the worst time in my life because I'm telling you right now, my performance was my identity. It was a roller coaster ride. As good as good, as bad as bad, up and down just like that. Hey, mama, I might talk to you today. Hey, mama, I ain't talking to you today. But how do you think my mother felt knowing that her child would literally cut? Man, I had some tell. I'm going off a little bit off topic right now, but my sister told me the other day. We got into an argument. And she said, Daryl, I called you back because I was afraid that if we left like that, we would never hear from you again. Think about that. She just told me that a couple days ago. So my actions from the past, 
of how I handled chaotic situations in my past, it's now scaring the people in my life to now not be who they really want to be for fear that I might not have a relationship with them. Now, that is chaotic. That'll make you, that'll force you say, okay, there's a common denominator here. You got stuff going on at the house. You got stuff going on with the kids. Now you got stuff going on with your sister. Uh, who, who is in the middle of all this? So there's something that has to happen here. Oh, not to mention my father. And we'll get to that later. <laughs> so that's why I'm saying chaotic situations, who you, defend, who you, who you have confidence is, it, ma it matters greatly. So we're going to switch gears. You mind going to the next screen, please? Yeah. Next one, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so as a process, I, I began to sit down, <laughs> and I was thinking about, okay, what did I go through my career? How did, I, how did I piece this thing together? What's the difference? How do we get out of this slump? Like you said, the chaos. How do we get out of this chaos? There needs to be a systematic process that you have in place. And I came up with the PEED process. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, because I, I like to goof around and things like that. My original thought <laughs> was to come out here and say, hey, y'all ready to get PEED on? But I was like, <laughs> nah. Nah, that probably ain't the best delivery, especially with the R. Kelly stuff going on in him, man. Okay, <laughs> probably ain't right, right? So that ain't it. I'll see, I probably, it's not probably not. So I just said, let me come with a different pro I like to add goofy things in every now and then. And the P process, preparation, expectation, elevation, destination. And here's how it goes. Your preparation reveals your expectation, which leads to elevation and to your destination. I'll say it again. Your preparation reveals your expectation which leads to elevation and to your destination. See, I can tell by what you're expecting to happen in the future by how you're preparing right now. As an athlete, we live a, prep, a life of preparation every single day. You're no different than an athlete. See, society tries to change. It, we try to you know, separate the two. No, you got an opponent too. You know, I, I'm a spiritual guy. You know, yeah, I know all the God, devil stuff and all that stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, some of us don't, need, don't even need a devil. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, some of us don't need a devil. You got you, the devil sitting there. I know when I DJ, the devil sitting there like, wow, well, we don't even touch him. We don't need, we, we good on that one. We good. We got that one locked up. Move on to the next one. You know, that's a good client right there. He pays off all the time. So that, I'm serious. That's, that's where I was at. That's where I was at. But your preparation, man, your preparation, how are you preparing right now? So don't come telling me that. You are expecting great things in your life. Because I'm going to ask you, let me see it. Let me see it. A story out of the Bible, you know, God told us, knows, hey, the rain's coming. How, we know he, how, how do we know that he was expecting the rain to come? Because he was building a boat 100 years before the rain even hit. <laughs> 100 years before the rain even hit. So that's why I said we have to have a systematic approach based on what you know about you. That's the key. That's the key. Because my preparation is going, to be look, is going to look a little bit different than your preparation. So now it's going to require you to take time to get to know thyself. You understand that? Because it's easy. Check this out. It's easy to get up in the morning. Oh, I got to check my emails. Oop, came off. Sorry. Oh, I got to check my emails. I got to get in my phone. What are they doing? It's a lot harder to say, let me get up. Let me start right now what I'm thankful for. Let me get up and start getting my thoughts out on paper. Let me, see, that's slowing yourself down. See, just like I said, as an athlete, my job, I have to slow myself down. But see, I have to consciously think about that. If I get up there and just, okay, go with the pitch, he's got me. His job is complete. Because the pitcher's job is, he's trying to get you out, but it's how he gets you out. How do I get you out? I got to throw your timing off. So time matters. You guys, you guys follow me with that? Okay. And so if I can get you worried about hands and all this other stuff, oh. You got no shot at hitting a 98 mile an hour fastball. Let me tell you that right now. Same thing in life. You getting up, I got to do, 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 do. There's always going to be something for you to do. There's always going to be something for you to do. You got to, I told my wife one time, we we're, were meal prepping. And I sent her a, a nice little note on purpose. On purpose now, see, I think, yeah, on purpose. I did, right? I said, you're worth meal prepping for. That's what I said to her. Because I wanted her to see, I don't mind taking two hours out of my day to meal prep for you because I know you go to work and they work your butt off so much you don't even get to eat sometimes. And so I did that on purpose as preparation. 
Now, now there's a certain destination in our home. <laughs> but uh, as preparation, you got that's all I'm saying. He ain't laughing. He, laughing. <laughs> he ain't laughing. <laughs> he know. <laughs> no, but there's a destination. Obviously, there's a goal we want to get to. Okay, but with good motives. You know, with, oh, I got you. <laughs> with good, with good, with good motives. With good motives, though. All right. But yeah, so we have to prepare properly. And so what my goal is today is to give you some tools to prepare. OK, I, I want to take you through how my mother prepared me. I want to take you through how I didn't even know. Remember I said before, there's two places you don't want to be in. You never want to have success and not know why. See, before I had failure and didn't, I didn't know why. I didn't know why I was having all these relationship issues. So I stayed in a slump longer than I was supposed to. Being down is not a bad thing. It's staying down. That's the issue. And you, it's a lot easier to stay down when you don't know what the heck to do. Really, I'm going to be honest with you. What I've realized is that we don't even, we honestly, we don't have a problem with messing up. We don't have a problem with failing. We stress out when we don't know what the heck to do, how to get back out of that thing. I'm, that one of the most frustrating things as a hitter is for me to be up at the plate and me to be struggling over 16. God, dog, and I'll, I'll share that with you. Over 16, and I don't know why I'm sucking. But if I have a plan, if I have a preset preparation routine that I can fall back on and just make slight adjustments to, then I can step in there confidently because I already have a foundation what I'm working for because it's based off of me. I know my habits. Okay, guess what? You do this. Okay, I know I like to do this in the game. Okay, let me tweak that a little bit there. Okay, we're good to go. Let me give you a prime example. I'm a very passionate person. Any guys that know me, my voice projects. It's not the best thing to do at home, OK? I get it. I'm very passionate. Sometimes Coach Jones shows up at the house, <laughs> literally. So what I had to do, understand, OK, these are my habits. I like to project, just like a baseball player. OK, what are my habits? Do I like to pull off the ball a little bit? OK, nope, I like to yell. OK, but I also like to write. And when I write, I tend to get my thoughts out better when I write. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write them down on paper. And then I'm going to wait a little bit, and then I'm going to sit down with my wife and present that to my wife. See, that takes all the emotion out of it. Now I'm getting my point across. I'm letting her talk. See, I had to intentionally structure that on my, put structure on myself so that when things do go out of control, I can now, I'm not going to stay down there that long. See, now I got a plan of action to get up out of that real quick. And then my wife's like, okay, you understand me. Now you, and I'm like, I understand you. And I get my thoughts. I get my way. Either way, I'm giving you my way. That's, that's the point. That's the point. You got to be willing. I tell my kids, I say, you got to be willing to do whatever it takes to get what you want. This sounds bad. Don't, this DJ talking right here, okay? This sounds bad. Probably one of the most influential <laughs> phrases that I've ever heard of was from Players Club. Have you ever, who, who's seen that movie? I'm going to Players Club. This is from a stripper, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying right now. And she said it like this I got to use what I got to get what I want. That's what she said. But who said it? Who said it? It's true, ain't it? It's true. I got to use what I got to get what I want. But realizing what I got. See, realizing what I got. See, the more we realize what we have, the more we can now be more effective in what we have. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I learned a lot about the difference between my natural abilities and my skill set. That was part of the problem. I didn't know my natural abilities. I didn't know when people walked up to me when I was in junior high that when they said, they, they said man, you have a pretty smile. Man, you talk right. Man, your voice projects. Man, I didn't know that all those were things that God had given me. I walked up to my teammate one time. I said, let me, let me, let me change it back. This is how I walk. Man, I want to. Because we in the club. I'm drunk at the time. Or DJ drunk. DJ drunk. DJ. Man, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't like getting rejected. But i tell you one thing. I don't ever get rejected because I know how to talk to them. I didn't even know what I was saying at the time. What I was saying is I knew how to persuade. I was using my gift. But here's the deal. When you have a gift. God's never going to take that away. You decide how you want to use it. You can use it for his glory. You can use it for your glory. But either way, it's going to work. And I did a lot of things. I got into a lot of things. My mouth has gotten me in a lot of trouble, OK? A lot of trouble. And I'm still working on that. But like I said before, once you understand that, that's the key. Do you understand? Scripture says, in all you're getting, get understanding. It didn't say just knowledge. Do you understand the knowledge that you have? Do you understand yourself? And it takes those down times. 
It takes those down times. I'm going to tell you right now, the whole reason I met Terry, God, dog, I was in a bad place. I was in a bad place. I was, but it was all on my own doing. Why? Because I was trying to do it myself. I didn't care nothing about people. It was about, all about DJ. My whole life was all. She had to take a back seat to my stuff. You understand? So everything was about me. So imagine that guy getting married. <laughs> Hadn't done anything to change anything, but he's getting married now. He's got to take on a family, two kids, and a wife. That's chaos. Not because of them, because of who's leading them. That, that's, that's reality. I told you I'm going to share a story at the end that it, it, you know, it may touch you a little bit because it, it's, it's real heartfelt and, and it's real because it just happened. And, but that's chaos. And so me, I've learned so much more about myself in the down times. And that's why I'm saying don't neglect the down times. The down times are where you really get to know who you are. The down times are where you really get to know who's on your team, really, where you get to know your players, who, who's with me and who's against me. And sometimes you're against yourself. That's when you realize you're against yourself. You know? So enough of that. So I want to tell you, that's, that's one guy. That guy's gone now. That's the guy that operated without a plan. That's the guy who was operating, who had, who had confidence in his outward ability. Now I want to show you a kid who had, who had more influence and more effectiveness as a teenager, as a young male, than he ever did when he, had, when he was in pro ball. Okay? Oh, God. I got you. I got you. Now, if you see, if you, um, that's chaos right there. I just didn't know. That's confidence, really, what it is. Because anybody can go, that's con if, if you can go out with them, with them things right there, you're good. But I, I'll tell you why this picture matters to me. This picture matters to me because <laughs> I got these glasses right after a horrific moment that happened in my life. I'm sitting down at five years old. And I'm watching the TV. Literally, I'm this close to the TV. I didn't know I needed glasses. I think I was watching, uh, what was it, Barney or Sesame Street. And I hear a lot of noise in the background. My mom's arguing with my dad. Boom, 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 boom. And you know, my dad was a, uh, uh, he, he did dictionary. Uh, he took, sold dictionary. So he's in and out the house all the time. So I'm used to seeing him pack up. I'm used to seeing him say, hey, I'm out the door. Well, this particular time is different. I'm sitting on the ground, squinting. He said, hey, hey, I'm about to go. But he, where, he, where he said he was going to go, that's the key. He said, I'm going to California. What? And that was the first time that I realized that I might be in trouble. Because the most influential man up to that point was walking out of my life. Now, the reason why I, I told you that, and, and <laughs> that's a chaotic situation. I just didn't know it. But the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because the outcome was totally different. Because although I had a horrific situation, I had to go to counselor for that, OK? We would go in. I just remember crying on the way out. I don't even remember what we were talking about. I just remember I hated seeing my mother cry. Whenever she cries, I cry. She came in right now and started crying. I'm crying, straight up. That's, how, that's the connection we have. That's, that's the connection we have. Okay? And so when we would come out, I remember sitting in the judge's office, and she walked back to the room, and I looked at my sister, and I said, Dad's not going to be our dad anymore. And she broke down crying. She broke down crying because the reality of it hit that our father, the person leading us, is gone. We have no head. There's no covering. And that was a time where my heart knew something that my head just couldn't comprehend. You guys ever been in there? Like, you, you believe something, but your mind just won't let you do it. That's where I was at. I was like, there's no way he's gone. And my heart's like, yeah, yeah, it's time for you to step up. And so that was an opportunity. I could have looked at that as something that destroyed my life. I shouldn't be here. Right now, I shouldn't be standing in front of you talking about this. Him leaving me meant that I was supposed to be a statistic. If you look at the statistics in the African-American community, you see a lot of African-American communities have fatherless homes. That's where I was supposed to be. You don't see very many successful people signing with Rice University, having 31 football scholarships, signing out of high school for half a million dollars at 17 years old. Oh, oh. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I said that. I kind of said that cool like I knew, but yeah, that's it. I still, I still love that. I still enjoy it. But I wasn't supposed to be there. Now I'm going to tell you why I was there, OK? Number one. Confidence and chaos, key number one. Creating the environment. My mother created an environment for me that I literally could not get away from. 
I remember she walked up to me. When I was asleep, she tickled my feet, had me laugh already. I'm laughing. See, there's a trick right, right there. She had me laughing, start my day. <laughs> then guess what she do? I remember she had the, the music playing. She had Babyface in a song. I don't, some of you guys may not remember that song. It's like, every time I close my eyes, I thank the Lord that I've got you. That I, and I, I lost my voice in fifth grade. So I, was, I made that choir, though. I made the choir. I can't hear that note. I can't hear that. But that's what it, she created an environment. So we're hearing music in the morning all the time. Music in the morning. So she's literally setting the at atmosphere. Now, I don't know if she did it on purpose. I don't know. She might claim that she did now. But I don't know if she did that, but she was just being her. She was just being her. We would get in the car, and we would chant. We would scream. And I'm telling you right now, man, me and myself sit in the back, and we had this song called Afro Puff, OK? And this is how it go. I'm roofing the truck with my Afro Puff. Hey, oh. And we're sitting there. I'm sitting there banging my head on the seat. <laughs> and she's sitting there turning around. And so we're, sing and we're singing songs. So I want to kind of give you a little insight of what our car rides would look like. <laughs> Some of you guys already know. It. For the top. Now, this video right here, in case you, that wasn't enough and you don't believe me, how many of you guys watched the Texans game the other day? First thing, that game sucked, didn't it? Yeah. Come on now. Okay. If you don't believe me that energy matters, um, and I have a friend in here, Suzette, if you don't mind, raise your hand. Okay. She sent me a message on Instagram the other day after I posted this video, and she said, I see where you get your enthusiasm. So you're going to see where I get my enthusiasm right here. Turn that up. That's my mother. <laughs> now my sister tries to egg it on, get her going a little bit here in a second, watch this. So now here's the, uh, you guys remember how that, uh, the next play. Yeah, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you got to listen to my sister, Edgar Owen. Oh, my God. Listen. Right. So, so. Just imagine, seriously, just imagine growing up in that type of environment where you have a mother that's not afraid to get vocal like that, you know, and, and, and the support system was there. 
you know, and she would give everything. Right now, I know I could call my mother and ask her, and she would go broke trying to. Uh, so if you're a mother in here and that's your kids, I, I made a video a few days ago. You know, there's a whole stigma about living through your kids, stop living vicariously through your kids. I challenged that theory and said, no, your job is to live through your kids because your legacy does not live on unless you live through them. You understand that? And God lives through us. His intent and purpose of living on the inside of us is to live through us. His ministry is supposed to carry on through us. So without our bodies, he can't do nothing. So I challenge you guys, if you're a parent, man, keep doing that. Give your kids the energy because you do not know and understand how much that may affect you. I mean, may affect your child. Okay? Uh, we're going to go to uh, confidence key number two. Confidence key number two, your words, man. Your words you speak matter. And this is an actual, these were the actual words that I said to my mom. She would have us speak in the morning. And, and when you're speaking those words of affirmation, and when, the only thing I did, I changed these confessions for athletes because I put it in my book. But normally it's confessions that she made us say every day I can rattle them off, okay? They say, I'm a new creature predestined for greatness. I'm a child of God fully accepted by the Father. I'm loved by God regardless of how I perform. I'm forgiven and will not be tormented by my past errors. I'm an overcomer and my faith is changing my circumstances. I'm a giver and God is causing people to help me prosper. I can rattle them on, but I don't need to. But you guys see, it's in me. It's in me. So whenever that happens, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, whenever that happens, okay, and I guess that was this payback for the last time I came to your event because I came in here and I phone rang right, right, right when he was talking. So, But anyways, so the seeds that you plant in your children, they matter. The seeds that you plant in your son or your daughter, they matter. The seeds that you plant in yourself, they matter. Because guess what? It's just like a seed. All it takes is more water and more water and more water. Just because you don't see it, guess what? doesn't mean it ain't there. I can remember walking out of the door at 21 years old because after uh, the off season, I would come back and play and stay with my mother because I bought her a house to repay her. And <laughs> I, I looked at, the, I watched her look as she walked out the door. And I could tell she was just upset and fear because she knew I was about to go do something I wasn't supposed to do. But she kept praying. She kept loving. She kept doing the things that she knows she did. in the midst of my chaos, in the middle of chaos, love, not resentment, not you're a failure. No, she's still building me up. She remained consistent throughout. Yes, ma'am. Um, somebody's parked in front of two dumpster doors. We've got an Infinity SUV and a Toyota. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be back. Sorry. Come back. Oh, this is not our phone. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so. She planted those seasons, and on the way, on, along on those car rides, that's what she would make us say every day. And I can tell you right now, from personal experience, I would go through situations in high school that other, my other friends would, they would fail, and I'm just walking on, walking tall. I remember telling somebody, man, I don't know why it was, but I was most confident in high school. Now look at my career now, and I was less confident playing professional baseball than I was when I was in high school. Well, duh, look at all the stuff that I was doing in high school. But I didn't know it. See, that's the key, I didn't know. I was just doing it just like any kid does when their parent forces them to do something. Like, oh, I'm just saying. But it was working. That's what I'm saying. So if you're a parent in here, I challenge you. I challenge you. Don't look at whether it's working or not right now because those seeds are getting in them. I'm a perfect example because I'm telling you, I used to be, I, I had a drug addiction. I had to go to counseling for uh, sexual promiscuity. That's how messed up I was. And now I look back. Now my mom, all those words she was speaking over me, and putting in me, she's, getting, she's bearing the fruit of it right now. I swear to God, I promise, I woke up one day, I said, God, dog, I'll never do that. I ain't being no freaking preacher. Crazy. And now I, I find myself up here in front of people trying to help encourage people to overcome what, they've been, what they're going through. Okay? So to tell you that words matter, and I'm going to have to run through that. I know I'm running out of time. Tell you that words matter. When I was in AA, I remember I just got called up. I was hitting 346 or something like that. I was leading the league in hitting. And I got called up. I was hot. I was good. But for whatever reason, I got up to double A. I started struggling. Why? Well, I started pressing. First game in Springfield, Missouri, I went 0 for 2. Next thing you know, we went to Arkansas. And Arkansas ain't so nice, okay? They were on me a lot. So I step up in the cage. I mean, in, in, the, in the end. Look, I said cage. That lets you know my memory of them ain't right, okay? I step up in the, in, in the, in the box. And I want to give you an example of what I went through uh, with that. And look at a black dude with a tear in his eye. You already know. <laughs> you think it didn't work? I don't see a play button. Did I delete the wrong one? Probably on the Okay. Well, I'll, I'll just explain it. So 
what happened is I step in a box and they play this exact thing that I'm showing to you right here. They played this exact video on the Megatron. I step up, Lisa Simpson gets up there, Daryl, we want home runs. And Bart Simpson gets in there, Daryl, Daryl. And the entire stadium starts saying, Daryl. Oh, it rocked me to my core. Okay? It, oh. And that's how I felt. You want to know how I know I felt? I went over my first 16. I went over 16. I remember God, oh, they're going to send me down. I ain't going to know. So my coach pulls me into the office. He sits me down like this. He said, Daryl, let me tell you something. I know you're pressing. He said, but let me tell you something. You have a month and a half left to go in the season. You're not getting sent down. Okay. Okay. He said, you belong here. You're good enough. Come again. You see, I'm over 16. You belong here. You're good enough. I took those words. I chose to take those words instead of the words that the other crowd was saying, because they were saying, you suck. And when I first got caught up, you don't get the advantage of having a, a, an average. So new people that see you, they don't know that you just got caught up. So I got zeros across the board. They're like, this joker sucks, right? <laughs> so that, and, and, and then going over 16, that didn't help my case. So I'll just tell you this, the end of that, I end up, that following week, I got Texas League Player of the Week. A couple weeks later, Texas League Player of the Month. After the end of the season, baseball, rate, baseball America rated me the number five prospect in all of AA after only seeing me play for a month. That's how important those words meant to me. Because I took those words, I accepted them, and I did it with my son the other day. A uh, kid said, he sucks at sec uh, shortstop. And I told my son, okay, son, you're the best shortstop on the team. And I walked away. I came back a few minutes later, I said, now you have a choice. You can believe his words are mine. I'm your father, I know more about you than anybody else. I know you, and I just told you, you're the best. You got a choice to choose those words or those words. That's what I did. I did that on purpose to show them you got a choice which words you're going to accept in your life. You do. All right. And key number three, visualization. This is a picture right here. This is what my mother did for me. You want to talk about intentionality. These are all physical examples of what my mother did for me. She made this picture. She took, that's Albert Pujols. You guys know Albert Pujols was the hottest thing at the time. She took my head out. Took my head out. Totally I took his head out. Yeah, right. You're right, he's struggling now. But that brother Joe made a lot of money. That <laughs> joker ain't worried about struggling now. But uh, you see, that's my head on it. So what, what I had the opportunity to do is, is look at a picture and see myself with where I want to be physically. Not just think about it in my head. She was giving me something to look at. Terry, I know I told you about that. Now you get to see the physical evidence that I wasn't lying to you. Okay? I talked about it in the podcast. I'm serious. She made that. And I got, I got physical proof I brought it, but uh, that's what it does. So now what's happening is the image of me in a, a Cardinal's uniform is getting on the inside of me. <laughs> the words that she's speaking, getting on the inside of me. Keep in mind, I'm going through a situation. I just lost my father. I just lost my father. That's supposed to build up angry. I'm supposed to be angry. I'm supposed to be upset. I'm supposed to be entitled. I'm supposed to be making excuses. But I am overcoming because she is intentionally creating a mindset that I could not focus on the negative. I didn't have time to. You guys know what I'm saying? So then draft day comes. Hey, I just want my agent calls me. Hey, I'm just letting you know the St. Louis Cardinals are taking your third round for half a million dollars. I'm like, God, dog. This stuff really works. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I'm going to tell you how I know it really works because I stopped doing it in pro ball. 2009. I started doing it again. I started doing it again. I put my picture on the wall, started speaking my affirmations. I started, and I'm not saying, dude, if you do this, then you got it. it's going to happen. Obviously, there's, there's got to be a belief system in there. You can't just say, I believe. Belief is a process. It takes every day, I got to do something to keep my belief going. It's just like working out in the gym. The minute I stop doing it, atrophy sets in. So when I did that, 2009, I was the St. Louis Cardinals player of the year. I went from hitting 205 to 320 just like that. What happened? I had the talent the whole time. But my maximi I maximized my talent by getting my mind in agreement with what my talent already brought to the table. And I believe that's the key here. We got talent all in the room. But as a hitter, let me explain how, how, how the swing works. You can have power all day, but here as a trainer, I have to teach you how to position your body pro properly. Because even though you've you got the strength, if you're not positioned properly, guess what? You're going to lack power. 
shoulder's gonna compensate, pull out and all. You got all these body parts compensating to make up for what you're lacking because you're not in your foundation. And that's what it is. It's not about your, what power you got, it's how you position yourself. I don't care who you are, if you plant a seed on top of the cement, it ain't growing, it's in the, right, it's in the wrong soil. It's not positioned properly. You can have all the concepts right. You plug that thing in the soil, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna start to grow if you keep that process going. Key word though, if you let it go down, the, the seed's gotta go down first. Notice, it's in the darkness where the seed grows its roots. You get what I'm saying? When it's by itself. And I challenge you guys to take the time to get to know yourself. See what you really enjoy. See who you really are, not what you do, okay? In this last quote, you'll see this, and this one, success doesn't happen to you, it happens from you. It happens to you, it, 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 it's from you. What my mother did, she got in the habit, she put all those tools on the inside of me, and what happened naturally and organically is stuff started coming out of me, the stuff that she was putting in. There's a scripture that said, everything I touch prospers and succeeds. And I'm telling you in high school, National Honor Society, first chair in the band, national track star, 31 football scholarships, half a million dollars signing bonus, okay? And that's not to mention, I signed with Rice University. I had all kinds of colleges. Everything I did prospered. Everything I did prospered. God is true to his word. You have to be true to the process. So I, this last thing I want to do, and this, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable if you don't want to do it. You don't have to do it. But I would like to, um, if you don't mind all standing up real quick, I'd like to do this because this is what, uh, I have some things that you guys can pick up, some affirmations that I, I give out to my kids and everything. And I, I just want you guys to repeat after me because I want you guys to get it out there. I want you guys to plant those seeds in your life. And if, if, you, if you enjoy it, if you want it, you can come pick these up after it. So if you don't mind repeating after me, it's called the master affirmation. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am powerful beyond belief. I have greatness within me. I have destiny ahead of me. I have creativity in my fingertips. I am honorable in a world of dishonor. I have integrity in each word I speak. I create value wherever I go. My purpose is bigger than my pain. I'm going to say that again. My purpose is bigger than my pain. I am committed in the face of chaos. I am courageous in the midst of battle. I am victorious over the war within. I am loved and I give love. I am a master. We're all masterpieces in here. Let's go ahead and do it together. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak to you guys. Thank you. Thank you.